Let's now turn our attention to some developmental features of the heart and take a look at this illustration here. This picture, starting with the one on the left, represents the heart tube. So when we left the embryo uh, in our earlier discussion, we left it at the fourth week of development after the lat lateral body folds had converted the flat embryo into a round embryo. And at that point, when the embryo has concluded its lateral body folds, they're developed in the ventral midline. Now that there is a ventral midline, by closing off the ventral wall, in the ventral midline of the chest, they developed this blood vessel called the heart tube. So this, this is a blood vessel. It's given the name heart tube. And blood is flowing through that vessel from a caudal to cranial direction. So the direction of blood flow is from here to there. Now, what we can say is that the middle portion of this tube initially is going to be the heart. The lower portion of the tube is going to be carrying blood to the heart since blood flow is in that direction. And we know that vessels that carry blood to the heart have to be veins. So we can say the lower portion of this tube will become veins. The middle portion of the tube will become the heart. And then the upper portion of the tube, which is carrying blood away from the heart, will, by definition, be arteries, since that's what carries blood away from the heart. So this becomes veins. This becomes heart. This becomes arteries. And then we can be more specific, saying the part of the heart into which blood flows from the veins will become the atrium. And then the part of the heart to which, from which arteries flow to go to arteries, in other words, where the blood leaves the heart, will become ventricle. So we can say that this becomes veins, this becomes atrium, this becomes ventricle, and this becomes arteries. And we can see that the names assigned to these regions reflect this. We said this becomes veins, and it's actually called the sign is venosus, veins. This is called the primitive atrium. This is called the primitive ventricle. We'll skip over that for one moment. And this is, we said it's going to become arteries. It's called the truncus arteriosus, indicating it's going to become arteries. Now, as we move from this picture to this picture to this picture, two separate really unrelated things are happening. So let's break it down one at a time. One of the things that we see that's going to happen is that the part of this heart tube that's um, going to become the heart is getting bigger, is bulging out compared to the part of the heart tube that's not going to become the heart. So the first question we have to ask is how did this part of the heart tube, how did the part of the heart tube that's going to become the atrium and the ventricle get larger. And there are a couple of different ways that it does it, only one of which is important for our discussion right now. And that is that the portion of the tube that's going to become the heart gets bigger in part by incorporating or sort of sucking into itself or drawing into itself some of the vessels nearby. So some of these vessels, which we said were veins, the sinus venosus, get incorporated into the atrium in order for the atrium to get bigger. And some of these vessels, which we said become arteries, get incorporated into the ventricle to make the ventricle bigger. So the final definitive adult atrium is made up in part from the original atrium and in part from veins that were nearby, the sinus venosus. And what's going to be the definitive adult ventricle is made up in part from the embryonic or primitive ventricle and in part from the arteries that work close by. Now, one of the things that we'll find in terms of structural characteristics is that the part of the heart tube that is the original atrium and ventricle has a what's called a trabeculated or a roughened surface. It has ridges of muscle on its inner surface. So this part of the heart tube has a roughened or trabeculated inner surface. The part of the heart tube that initially is blood vessels, either arteries or veins, has a smooth surface. Vessels have smooth surfaces. So what we would expect is that when some of these arteries get incorporated into the ventricle, the adult ventricle will partly have a roughened or trabeculated surface and partly have a smooth surface, the smooth surface being the part that came from the nearby arteries. And similarly, the atrium 
The atria will have partly a roughened surface and partly a smooth surface, the smooth surface being the part that was initially the nearby veins or the sinus venosus. So if we look at this, if we look at this um, chart here, this is telling us that the primitive ventricle, the original heart tube that was ventricle, gives rise to the trabeculated or roughened parts of the right ventricle and left ventricle. And similarly, the primitive atrium gives rise to the trabeculated parts of the right atrium and left atrium. Whereas the smooth-walled part of the right atrium is, was the original sinus venosus that got incorporated. And similarly, the smooth part of the ventricles was the original bulbus cordis, which is the proximal part of this truncus arteriosus, which got incorporated in. So the smooth-walled parts of ventricles and atria were originally vessels near the original heart. The trabeculated part of the adult heart chambers is the original uh, atrium and ventricle. The other thing that's happening as we go from one picture to the next here, in addition to the enlargement of the atrium and ventricle, is that this tube that was originally a straight tube, with this being caudal and this being cranial, this being the inflow end, that being the outflow end, as we look at it from the lateral side, we can see it's folding on itself, and by the time it finishes folding, it has sort of an S-shaped curve to it. It has an S-shaped curve to it, with the upper part of the ventricle coming down to the bottom, the lower part, which was atrium, going up to the top. So we end up with, originally, we had the atrium below the ventricle, and we end up with the atrium above the ventricle. Originally, we had the veins caudal to the heart and the arteries cranial to the heart, and we end up with the veins coming into the back of the heart and the arteries leaving from the front of the heart. And that indeed is the adult structure. The arteries leave from the front of the heart, as we saw in this picture. Here are the arteries leaving from the front of the heart. And you can see veins there, and it's less obvious there. There it's obvious that the veins are going into the back wall of the heart. Okay, so that adult structure is based upon this S-shaped curve of the heart. Okay, so that has given us the basic structure of the adult heart. At this point, we've created a heart that has one atrium and one ventricle. What we're going to have to do is divide that heart so that it has two atria and two ventricles, in other, word, in other words, divide it into a right and a left portion, and that will be by way of a process that's called septation, the creation of the atrial and ventricular septa, which is a process that will occur during weeks five through seven, and we will begin our discussion of that uh, after we take a break. We've now uh, developed the heart so that we have a single atrium and a single ventricle, and we now have to set about the task of dividing that heart into a right and a left side by building a uh, septum for the atrium and another septum for the ventricle. So let's start off talking about the atrial septum and how it develops. And this is going to develop uh, basically during weeks five and six. So if we look inside the uh, right atrium. This is the right atrium that's been opened up here. And you can see the opening into the tricuspid valve leading over to the right ventricle. This back wall of the right atrium is the atrial septum. This is the wall that's going to be separating the right atrium from the left atrium, which is on the back of the heart, as you recall. And we'll be looking at how that developed. And one of the characteristics that's seen on the uh, atrial septum is this oval depression called the fossa ovalis. And what we're going to see is why that fossa ovalis is there and how that fossa ovalis is related to an embryonic structure known as the foramen ovale. So we'll talk about that as we go along. Now, in the notes, there is uh, this series of illustrations, which are really somewhat complex. And we'll come back to these illustrations after we have uh, simplified the matter a little bit. But what we're going to be talking about is how this region, which is the atrium, is going to get divided into a right and left atrium by the formation of some structures that will become the atrial septum. But rather than try to deal with this picture right now, let's make this very simple by uh, creating a very simplified sort of cartoon diagram.
So if we imagine that this is the uh, original atrium, what it doesn't show is how blood vessels, how the veins get into the atrium, and that's not necessary for this simplification. So this is the original atrium. Down here, this is the original uh, ventricle. And what we're going to want to do is take this atrium and divide it into two with a septum, with a wall. Now, separating the atrium from the ventricle, there is this narrowed region. Remember the atria enlarged. We already talked about how that happened. The ventricle enlarged. But between the atrium and ventricle, it didn't enlarge very much. And so we have this canal called the atrioventricular canal that leads from the atrium into the ventricle. And so before we even think about dividing the atrium, let's recognize that we're going to have to divide the atrioventricular canal into a right and left canal because it's not going to do us any good if we divide the atrium into two atria but have them both flowing into a common canal. So the first thing we can do is put in the center of this atrioventricular canal a separation or a septum, and sometimes called the atrioventricular septum. Most commonly it's referred to as the endocardial cushion. So the endocardial cushion will develop in the atrioventricular canal and thereby separate that into a right and a left atrioventricular canal.